Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily photography show on YouTube's on the Facebooks. And I'm just going to keep saying that until someone proves me wrong. Hey, so today's plan was going to be to talk about this guy here, the uh, Blackmagic Pocket Ultrascope, which allows me to get full scopes off of any SDI video feed in here into a Mac. But we're having a little problem because they haven't released software for Mac OS Sierra. And, and I'm trying to get a straight reason out of this, if, uh, a straight answer out of this, if there's a good reason, technical reason, or if they just have gotten lazy. Um, and unfortunately, all the older hardware that I have that is running pre-Sierra Mac OS uh, doesn't have the hardware graphics capacity to drive it. So currently, I can't run it. So I may have to downgrade. What? My audio is desynced. Well, I, uh, uh, really? <laughs> you're, you're saying yes. Uh, yes, we made the live stream. Hey, Burns Tech. Um, so I'm getting, Ryan's telling me my audio is out of sync. I have no idea. There's nothing. Are you getting an echo or it's just full on desync? It's just like a frame well, okay, then leave me alone. <laughs> Yeah, what are you gonna do? Okay, back to it. So I was gonna talk about this, but I can't because I can't get it to work. So I will, I will uh, figure that out hopefully because I need this thing to make this camera as color accurate as possible. Because if you've noticed, it still isn't as good as it should be. Um, although I've kind of gotten used to it now, but it's not the way I want it. Anyway, I need this. Can't get it to work yet. We'll sort that out later. So today, what I'm gonna do instead is talk about how you can take the image from one of these fabulous little cameras, little, uh, in this case, my Lumix GX85, but this works with all the Lumix cameras, and it works with the vast majority of mirrorless cameras, as far as I know, probably all of them, to take this and put it on this. And I don't just mean transferring the picture, but I mean actually controlling the camera from the iPhone or your Android device. It's all basically the same. And this is crazy, crazy cool. So a couple of other people saying hello, love you guys uh, for live viewers. So Graham Parker, welcome. First time on YouTube in the right place. Yes, you found it and on time, bravo. Um, and you're no buffering, you're good. Excellent, Graham's in sync, Jess is saying good morning. Love it, thank you guys for popping in. So the process to connect these two is quite simple. Now I will admit, if as much as I am an iOS fanboy, if you have an Android, apparently it's even easier because these all have NFC and with the Android, the NFC, apparently you just kind of do one of these things and it works. That's, that's cool. I don't know why, because I know these have NFC chips in them. They use them in Japan for paying for trains. I don't know why you, we can't do this, but we can't. So anyway, it's just a few extra steps. It's not a huge deal, but just so you know, if you're Android, you're a leg up on this one. Um, for once, I guess I'm going to give you one every once in a while. Ha, sorry. So let's, let's see how this works. So the process is pretty simple. Um, as usual, when I'm doing something like this, I've got this camera hooked up to an HDMI port just so that you can see what the camera sees. Normally, obviously you wouldn't be doing it with the HDMI port. And just to kind of, to put that out there that when it is connected to the HDMI, uh, autofocus slows down. So if you see like slow focusing, that's why. Don't say, look, the camera doesn't focus fast. It's because of the HDMI out. That's why that's happening. So let's get this thing started. Let me flip over to this view. Okay, so now we're looking through my, my Lumix camera here, and there's the full-on interface. And to fire up the Wi-Fi, you can often, well, you can always assign it to a, a hardware button. A lot of the cameras have a dedicated Wi-Fi button. This one, the GX85, does not. And even if it had a dedicated Wi-Fi button, all that really means is that it says the Wi-Fi on it somewhere. Um, this one does not. And let's see, I'm just double checking that. Um, but you can program it to whatever you like. So I've got, this thing has a bunch of program buttons on there. So let's see if that's kind of, hopefully that's in focus there. Um, this thing has a ton of buttons on it that you can program. There we go, that's better. And so you could assign any of these to be it. I am not doing it that way. Instead, on this camera, because I've got buttons that I want, all these other buttons have assignments that I want. This one, I'm using one of the soft buttons. You tap on here and it slides open a little screen and you can see the little tiny Wi-Fi symbol up there. Let's take a closer look at that. So you can see up in the top right, uh, FN5, there's a little Wi-Fi symbol. Okay, so that is how I activate the Wi-Fi. So I tap that and you're gonna see the screen go blank for a moment here. And I'm just gonna leave it up um, just for a moment here because I do want it to come back up to, there we go. The thing that says it's broadcasting, uh, the name it's broadcasting is Photo Joseph's GX85. And now I need to find that network on my iPhone. That's the next step. So let's go ahead and switch over to the iPhone screen, hit the settings, go into the Wi-Fi, and there it is, Photo Joseph's GX85. So I tap on that and it connects and that's all there is to that. So now I can go in and launch 
the app that you need. Now, the app here is uh, it's right in the bottom center of the screen. It says Panasonic, and it's called the Image app. If you're looking for this app on your uh, for your phone, um, make sure you find the one that's Panasonic Image app. There's a couple other Panasonic apps that were designed for controlling different cameras, older cameras. This is the one to use now. It it's, works for all of them. But um, I remember when I very first set this up years ago, I had the wrong app. Going, Why won't it work? Why won't it work? And it's because I had the wrong app. So that's when you want this Panasonic Image app. So that's the one that we want. Tap that. And I think for a moment here, it's going to force me to go vertical. Oh, no, it's flipping over. Connecting to camera. And there we go, the connection has been made. And if you were looking at the camera itself now, uh, normally you'd see a little connection thing on here tells you it's connected. Now, because of the HDMI, the screen has gone blank on there, So, but that's fine. Okay, so now I can choose to go either to uh, remote operation or to transfer images. So at this point, if I wanted to just copy some pictures off, right? I've been out shooting with this, now I wanna copy these pictures off uh, onto my iPhone, I just go into the transfer, and it'll show you that too. If, on the other hand, you want to control the camera, you go to remote operation. Look at all these live folks watching. Is that the GX85? Yes, Novak, this is the GX85, my favorite little, I love this guy. Super, super little travel camera, the best. And um, and someone's saying, David is saying it is, oh, you're agreeing, you're confirming, thank you. And Yash, hey, Yash, you're back. So, uh, a bunch of you watching live, awesome. So let's go back to it. So we go back into this view, I tap on remote operation, and it'll take a moment to connect, or to finish connecting, I suppose, bring up the screen, and voila, there we have it. So now I have all kinds of controls over here. I can tap on the screen here to tap on what I want the camera to focus on. So that's a really neat little first step there. So let's move the camera a little bit closer to this stuff. If I wanna tap on the serial number on the side of that product there, I can do that. Tap on the blue wires in the back or whatever I tapped on, the headphones, and we got that. So that's all pretty slick. We have focus control. Up uh, to the right of the uh, image window, there's that little that little chevron. If I tap that, it slides out this drawer, and now we get all kinds of cool controls. So I can go into white balance. I can set my white balance from any of the presets in here. So you can choose that in there, including your custom presets in there. You can do that. Um, you also have the Kelvin one, but it doesn't seem to allow you to change the Kelvin, which I was actually surprised at. So that might be something unique to this camera or even just a bug. Um, I'm not sure, because I thought you could control that. But we'll just go back to auto for this. You have ISO control, so you can go into any manual ISO, or I've just got it set to auto for now. You have focus control. So, oh, no, sorry. This is shooting control. So single, burst shooting, 4K, self-timer. So all those are in here. Let's go back to single. And then here we have focus control. So face or eye detection, focus tracking, 49 area, and so on and so on. So you can choose all of those from here as well. Now, on the bottom, kind of bottom middle, you see the finger with a little X, a uh, little trigger and the X on it. Right now, the way this is set, if I tap the screen, it is just going to focus on it. If I tap that to turn it off, now when I tap the screen, it's going to focus and take a picture. Could you hear it take the picture? It's taking the picture there. How cool is that? So you're, you're looking at the screen here and you go, I want to take a picture of that blue thing in focus. So I just tap on the blue thing, it focuses and takes the picture. So cool. So you got that control. And then and I'm not going to go into like every little setting on here. There's a bunch of stuff, but this is uh, this is some of them. Some of the cool stuff. Burns Tech is saying, I came from Nikon to the Lumix family and the Panasonic app is way better in every way. Thank you, Burns Tech, for sharing that. Um, I've never used the Nikon app and uh, and that's good to hear. So thanks. And Ira is saying, make sure you can charge your phone when you're on the go as it will drain your battery like crazy. Okay, this is true. You are going to be chewing through batteries a bit more than usual when you're doing this because the Wi-Fi is open this full-on Wi-Fi data transfer going on. Probably there might be a Bluetooth connection as well simultaneously, not really sure how that works. Uh, you obviously have your screen on the whole time, any controls that you're doing. So yeah, you are gonna chew up through, chew through some battery. Um, if I'm doing this seriously, I'll always have some kind of external battery pack with me to plug stuff in. Um, you know, or if you're in your car, you can always use the car charger. So, but that, that's a good good suggestion. David is asking, do you know about a hack or an app or any solution to have full screen live view for Lumix cameras? It would be awesome. No, and I agree. And I think, don't quote me on this, but I think that the next version of the app is going to allow full screen. I, I could be wrong and don't shoot me if I was wrong, but I think that that is coming because that's obviously a common request, especially, I mean, this is on a six plus, so, or seven plus, whatever this is. Um, so it's the bigger screen. If you're on a smaller screen, it's even smaller. Now this does work on the iPad as well. So you can run this app on an iPad or an Android tablet. So you have a bigger screen. So that is an option too. Okay, so let's uh, let's get back to it. So we're, we've seen the control. Uh, what other controls we have? Up in the top right corner, you see there's the record button. That's to start recording video. There's this jump thing, which honestly I've never used, but jump snap, I guess you can, jump up in the air and it takes a picture. I honestly, I don't know. Uh, 
but the all important photo button. So on the right side, right center, if I just tap that button, it takes a picture. So I can go either way. I can have it tap on the image, tap on the screen on the image or where I want it to take a picture um, of in focus. It'll focus, take the picture, or I can have it just be the focus when I'm doing that and then tap the, um, the shutter button to take the picture. You also have this Q menu, which gives you a bit more control. So this, this basically gets us into the quick menu. And you can see that clearly enough up there. You can choose your photo style, turn on filters, change aspect ratio, picture size, quality, focus mode, uh, turn on post focus. I mean, there's all kinds of controls. I, not everything, you don't have control over absolutely everything in the camera, but you have a control over a lot of stuff in there. So that, that's pretty slick. Um, and then is there anything else? Oh, manual focus. You can do manual focus on here too. Let's go back to this. And you see just to the right of the uh, of the shutter buttons, there's a little MF and a button, little arrows up and down. And as I tap that, it, it automatically zooms in for me. And you can see, let's pan this over a little bit. Can I do that in here? Yeah, here we go. I'm gonna pan this over. So I'm just dragging on the screen to pan that. And if I wanted to focus on the barcodes on there, okay, this is kind of slow process, but it's getting closer, it's getting closer. Here we go, we're getting closer. You see it coming into focus and you're gonna see focus peaking. There we go, the little red lines telling me exactly what's in focus on there. So now I know I'm, I'm super sharp on that. So pretty, pretty slick little control you've got there. Okay, so now we've taken some pictures, again, either through this system or just shooting normally and then connecting this. And now we wanna pull some pictures over to it. Yash is saying camera tech is getting crazier and crazier. Dude, you are so correct. Okay, so now to change into the, um, the capture, playback, whatever mode, if we go to, let's see here, let's go back to this view. Uh, notice on the bottom, there's four buttons, home, live control, playback, and menu. I'm in live control. I'll tap on playback. And there we go. It switches over to playback mode and it starts to show me, it shows me the picture. So um, there's some other pictures I took earlier when I was setting this thing up. We can scroll through here. Choose a picture you want to look at. So this is some of my stuff from Mexico. I haven't cleared off the card yet. Here's uh, looks like a first uh, last night, a little party, a little bit of mezcal, a lime, and that is worm salt. That's right, it's worm salt. So it's salt, chili, and dried up, ground up worms. It's actually really good. So just don't knock it until you tried it. Okay, um, right, so now let's copy a picture over. So I, when I tap on that, you'll see there's a couple of icons there. There's a copy to phone, there's a share and a delete. So you can share directly from here, but, uh, you know, let's be honest. What you really want to do is bring it into the phone so you can adjust it, enhance it, and do your things to it. That's a better way to go. So I'm just going to tap on the copy. It says copying files and so on. Now, if I wanted to copy multiple files over, I can do that as well. Uh, we'll let this finish here. It's, oh, there it goes. Um, mm -hmm. Copy that file over. So let's do, if I want to go multiple, let's go back. And then up in the top right, I can tap on select. And from here, I can go, okay, I want that picture, that picture, that picture, that picture, and then hit copy or share or whatever, and it's going to copy over. You can also have it uh, transfer um, uh, all the pictures right, automatically, so you hit it and just transfers everything, so you can do that as well. Now, one of the things to point out is it is only going to transfer the JPEG. So this is one of the many, many reasons that if you're working this way, you want to share out in the field, you want to shoot RAW plus JPEG. Now, if you're using if you're using the camera connection kit, which is not, I don't have here. Anyway, if you're using the camera connection kit, you can plug in, or the SD card reader rather, you can plug that in, take your SD card out, plug that in, and then you can copy the raw files over. And then you can edit with raw apps. So there's that option as well. But for the quick sharing, copy this like this, it's gonna pull over the JPEG. Uh, Jess is saying, this is pretty cool. Love being able to take pictures without having to be directly behind the camera. Will be great when recording kids, also cool for getting family shots. 100%. So. There's so many different ways that you can use this. In fact, let's just talk about that for a moment. Um, obviously not having to be at the camera, there's many reasons you might wanna do this. I think the first time I ever used this on an actual commercial shoot was shooting uh, a cyclist, dirt bike, um, mountain biking, that's the word, mountain bikers. And there was this jump they're going, over. it was a race, and there was this jump they're going over. And I wanted to get a shot from down low pointing up, you know, you got the jump and the cyclist coming over didn't want to be laying down there, not because of my own safety, because I could be off to the side, no problem, but because I didn't want the cyclist to come over the jump, see me down there and freak out because they wouldn't have seen me beforehand. They had no way to know that I was there. So I took the camera, put it down on the ground, propped some rocks or something up under it, got it positioned, pointing up at it, and then um, and connected this. And then I was able to stand back out of the way and fire off the camera as it goes. Now there is a, a very slight delay between when you tap the screen and it triggers the camera, understandable. So you, you know, it's just a little predictive. You just tap it that 
half second or quarter second, whatever it is beforehand. You get used to figuring out what that is and that's all good, no problem there. Um, you're not going to be looking at the viewfinder, waiting for the action and then tapping the button to capture the action. By then it'll be too late. So if you're if you're trying to shoot that way, or you have to shoot that way because you can't see the live action, you really are gonna have to do a little bit of predictive shooting. But when you're able to watch the action, tap the screen, then that's gonna be a better experience and they're gonna tap it just a hair early. So that's the way that's gonna go. Uh, Sean, Real House Film is chiming in. He says, well, I use this app when I'm flying the GH4 on the 33-foot jib. Right, we've done that together, haven't we? Um, I use an iPad either mounted on my jib assistant that you can tap to focus, uh, mounted on the jib or jib assistant you can tap to focus. Remember when you set the focus on the shot for the DXO one shoot, exactly. So this was a really cool thing. So we've got, uh, shooting with Sean, we had the camera on a jib and we're using the GH4 shooting video. Camera's up on a jib. I'm able to monitor the shot on the iPad or iPhone and change focus, start and stop recording, all of that from the remote. Now the range, the distance that you get is, um, is getting better and better. On older cameras, it's not quite as good. And if, as you have interference around you, that will diminish as well. But we were shooting out in an open field and having this, this big distance there was not a problem, which was really, really cool. Um, Graham's saying, can you shoot more than one frame at a time? Yeah, you can switch into any of your shooting modes. So you can go into the fully automatic, um, you know, multi-frame mode. You can go into, um, wait, what's happened to my screen here? No idea. You can go into the, uh, oh, I think it's the screensaver on this, sorry. Uh, you can go into 4K photo mode, you can go into video mode, you can do focus stacking, you can do all of that from here. So yeah, you can shoot as many frames per second as you need or want. Um, the Burns Tech is saying of the GH4 and the Wi-Fi range is awesome from 15 feet away, the camera with a very strong signal and still able to view and control it, no problem. Your results may vary depending on your interference. Yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was suggesting. So you definitely can get a uh, better, better range when you don't have any other Wi-Fi stuff going on around you. And Novak is saying, I assume the bracketing and focus stacking can be controlled like this too, and the focus peaking. Yeah, um, I don't know if you saw when I was in the manual mode, we saw the focus peaking. I don't recall whether you can turn it on or off in there, but it's there. And focus bracketing, focus stacking, uh, we saw, I think we saw all of that in the quick menu settings. And if, if you can't turn it on or off, anything you can't turn on or off in here doesn't mean that you can't still fire the camera in that mode. You would just have to go to the camera to make the changes and then go back here to actually fire it. But everything you've mentioned there, I'm pretty sure all of that can be done directly in here. And then so once you've transferred it, now it's just a case of, you know, like any other time, you just, oops, I want to rotate that. You just go into your photos roll. Here we go. And there's the picture that I just shot. So now I've got that picture and I can, of course, take that in and edit it and share it from whatever app that I want. And that's kind of all there is to it. It's pretty straightforward uh, and it's, it's kind of awesomely powerful. It's really, really cool the things that you can do. I love, love being able to do this. Uh, oh, I was gonna give examples. So the motorcycle, uh, the um, uh, mountain biking thing was the first one that I did, but I've used this for, uh, God, I've used it for family stuff. That's a great example. When, you know, my family were sitting there just kind of take the picture and you can put a self timer or so you have, you can push the button then put it away and trigger it or have your hand behind someone's back and trigger it that way. So you can do it either way there. Um, I've also used it, this is a great example, uh, it's a fun story in which if I'd thought of this, would have had the picture, but I don't. A couple years ago, pregnancy shoot, and we were doing this really cool, artsy, silhouetted, um, with powder in the air shot, really cool thing. And so we had on set the pregnant woman, um, her partner and me, there's the three of us. And we wanted to do this thing with the powder and we couldn't, um, we couldn't, was it, how, how, how did this go? Oh, we needed two people with powder, two people with hands full of powder to kind of clap the hands, make the powder go and get out of the shot. And um, yeah, and so what I did, was, did I shoot it in 4K photo? I think I just shot it in high rate shutter speed. I don't remember, maybe I shot it in 4K photo. Either way, whatever. I couldn't be at the camera to push the button. That's the point. I needed to be there with my hands full of stuff. So I was able to trigger it from the remote, set the remote down and then fire off the powdery stuff. Cool. Anyway, so it's fun stuff like that. All right. Uh, other comments coming in. Burns is saying, I like that you can take control of the camera even if the app is connected and vice versa. It doesn't really limit use except when it's actually recording and then it matters. So what he's saying here is that if I, let's see if I can bring this up. Let me bring the control back up here. Um, I can still control the camera from the camera, even though I'm in this control mode here. So let me go into live control mode go back into that and I want to show you what happens. It pops up a dialogue that'll say the camera is under local control or something like that. 
Okay, so right now I have control over the camera, right? I can do everything here. As soon as I go over and I touch something on the camera, it pops up and it says camera operation in progress. Now I have full control of the camera. I can change everything that I want on here like I normally would. I can shoot on here. I'm not limited because it's connected. I just have to wait for a moment there. You see how quickly it was after I touched anything, the remote app regains control. And there you go. And that's all there is to it. Um, okay, and you're saying it's it doesn't limit use except when actually recording, right? So if you're in video recording mode, then you do have less control. And um, can you control focus while it's recording video? Probably not. Let's actually try it. Let's hit video control, uh, video recording. Okay, so now it's recording. And can I control focus? Ha, <laughs> look at that. Tap to focus, then we go back to that full screen there. So it is recording. You can see the bottom left, you see the red dot, 13 seconds, 14, that's recording. If I want to tap on something else to focus to that, I can. Let's go into manual focus mode. Can I do that? Um, change the display view. Okay, I don't have manual focus mode here, but I mean, come on, let's face it, that would be pretty slow and painful. Um, so you have that capability as well, which I think is pretty pretty cool. All righty. Hey, uh, that's it. We're going to kill it there. Thanks a lot for watching. Tons of live audience today. Love that. Appreciate you watching live and commenting. And of course, if you missed any of this, this will be back up online in full quality shortly. Thanks again for watching. Um, I don't know what, I'm, what am I doing tomorrow? I had, well, we'll see if I can get this thing up for tomorrow. Uh, if not, my scheduled for tomorrow, because this was scheduled for today, my scheduled for tomorrow is a topic of when clients go bad. We've all had it. But I think it's something worth talking about, how you handle it, how you deal with it, and so on. So that's going to come up probably tomorrow, Friday, if not. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Talk to you soon. See you next time. Bye-bye.